Arlington has won the Super 8 Massachusetts State Championship. From the Toslowski Gymnasium here on the campus of Arlington High School, ACMI Sports presents Arlington High School Boys Varsity Basketball. Tonight, the Spy Ponders of Arlington High School host the Minutemen of Lexington High School. Hello everyone, I'm Don Phelan, happy to be joined by Scott Zwick tonight, Alex Van Thong is our producer, and a whole cast of volunteers bringing you this great action here tonight from the Toslowski Gymnasium. Spy Ponders come into tonight's game with a record of two and one, as is Lexington. And Scott, another Middlesex League test for the Spy Ponders. So far, 2-1 and one overall and 2-1 and one in league play. And um, Lexington pose, poses a little bit of a problem. They have this transfer player named Jason Ayala, number zero. Keep an eye on him. He's averaging around 22 per game. And Coach Bola said he is the player to watch for the Minutemen. The Spy Ponders are going to try to build off their second half uh, last week against... Um, Watertown where they, they were just outstanding. They kind of got a little pep in their step. They they got some momentum going. It felt like maybe it was a crossroads moment of the season. And they're going to try to build on that against a strong Lexington team here tonight. So rounding out the starting lineup for the Minutemen. Number zero, we mentioned him, Jason Ayala. Number four is Charlie Bimber Bernberg. Excuse me. Number five, Will Amsler. Number 11, Dante Ortiz. He's one of the co-captains for the Minutemen. And the final co-captain, number 34, Case Cronin. Now you have the introduction of the Spy Ponders. Number one, Brendan McNamara. Number five, Elon Sines Grant. Number 35, Jelani Joshua. Number 24, Tri-Captain Sam Swift. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Spy Ponders is number 14, Tri-Captain James Gascoigne. Head coach of the Spy Ponders in his 11th year is John Bowler. He's assisted by Jackie Woods. And the head of basketball operations for the Spy Ponders is Tim Schuler. And now with a girls game before, I don't know if they're going to have a second anthem or not. I guess we will. So we'll have the playing of our national anthem. And as we get ready for tonight's action, something that Matt Ruri and I alluded to in the home opener on Tuesday night was the Spy Ponders home consecutive winning streak, which now stands, Scott, at an incredible 45 games. Outstanding, sensational, and amazing for the Spy Ponders. You know, I, we, we mentioned the pregame show last week, uh, halftime last week, this team when they play with energy and effort, this team is almost impossible to beat at home, especially in league. It'll be James Gascoigne for the Ponders and Case Cronin for the Minutemen. Veteran official Dave Kuzmich will throw it up. Other official tonight is Hal Geary, and we're ready for action. Spy Ponders will look to get deflections and steals early on, and we'll get our first look at... Jason Ayala, the so transfer student. Yep, this is the player we were told to watch from Oakland, California. Jason, Ay Jason Ayala. 
Arlington looks to be in man-to-man -man defense. Ayala takes the pull-up pop from the foul line. No good. Rebound by Simes Grant. One thing you won't see by the spy pod is they're not going to get spooked by any individual players. They believe in their team concept and that individual players can step up and guard great players. Charlie Bernberg got a deflection on that pass. Gascoigne was looking for Joshua on the post. Didn't work. Now a nice strong move there by Cronin, and he lays it in. A little up and under. Dipsy do for Cronin. Outstanding offense early. First points of the ball game for Lexington. Now a great pass away from the ball. Joshua got free and he lays it in. Spy Ponders, a little quick one hitter there. It was a back screen and laying it in for Arlington was effectively at the hoop, uh, Philip Jerry. Oh, Jonathan, jo uh, Jolly jo Joshua. Joshua. Joshua, sorry about that folks. Arlington with the turnover, here comes McNamara. Gascoigne baseline cause up and under, high off the window. No, Joshua with the rebound, kicks it back out. It's a good decision there. He didn't really have a shot. He was able to get it to a teammate. Josh. Signs Grant, not in there for scoring, but he had a fantastic game on Tuesday night. Ball knocked away by Lexington. Here comes Ayala, lost control of the ball. And Sam Swift with the two on two with Joshua. Swift strong to the hole, lays it up, no. Joshua with the rebound, and he's fouled by Case Corona. will get called for it on the rebounding action. Joshua with amazing energy early, all over the glass. He's been effective and very energetic. First foul on Cronin, first on the team. 6.25 remaining, first quarter, that ball was deflected. Swift can go back to the backcourt to retrieve it. 2-2, two -two. Ponders and Minutemen here at the Tozlowski Gymnasium. Right now, Lexington's denying the ball to Super Sophomore. Oh, Joshua with a beautiful up and under lays it in. Joshua finishes at the cup with a dipsy two. Spy Ponders energized. 4 to Allington. Joshua has all four so far for Allington. Lexington five. is really playing tough defense on McNamara. It's going to be tough for the Spy Ponders to score through him. They're going to have to find other ways to get shots at the basket. Cronin with the spin move went into the contact. They're going to get Joshua on that foul, his first, first on the team. Joshua continues to be involved in all the action. Cronin is a beast inside. He showed it up and under first time. That was an effective, strong spin move. And he's going to be a handful for Arlington down low. First free throw by Cronin is good. He has all three of the Lexington points so far. Lexington has been struggling kind of down for years, and I'm sensing a little bit of a pep in their step as they're energized by an early start that has them and an Arlington team who struggled a bit down, uh, to start the season. Tied at four, Cronin has all of them for Lexington, and Joshua has all of them for the Ponders. His guest, Coyne, many fakes off the window, kick at the roll. Joshua again keeping it alive. Gascoigne comes up with a loose change. Sam Swift for three. Swift way downtown bang, but it's Joshua that keeps that play alive with a deflection, and he continues his effective energy. Sam Swift hit three pointers in the home opener on Tuesday. He hits his first one here tonight. Allington has a possible advantage here if they push it. McNamara, Swift is going to try another three. That was off the mark, rebound by Ayala. A little bit of a heat check there by Swift. He's been playing with a lot of confidence lately, and here he comes on the break. Signs Grant with the deflection from behind. Swift to the pole, no. Lexington with the rebound up and down action here early on. Again, Signs Grant with a hand on it. Ayala for three, spins around, no. Rebound put back by Bernberg, no. Gets it again, and he throws it out of bounds. Frenetic action and pace here at the Taz on a steamy Friday night. And this is the kind of offense and defense and pace that Coach Bowler and Coach Woods like. They like frenetic, they think that their, their players play well and they are very effective with it here. For a substitution for the evening, junior David Zur into the Lexington lineup and he replaces Case Cronin. McNamara to the cup, lays it in. McNamara is someone that is not bothered by contact or speed, shows it there. Dribble driving to the basket with a little pull up. Nine for Spy Ponders, 422 remaining. First quarter shot there is no good by Lexington. Gascoigne fights for the rebound. He has it. Allington with the three on two. McNamara fakes, a little floater off the window. No rebound fought for. Joshua fights for it. Allington comes up with a signs. Grant picks up the loose change and resets the Allington offense to McNamara. That time it was. Gascoigne that, that kept the possession alive with the tip. The Spy Ponders are playing 
with a little bit more energy than the Minutemen. Brendan McNamara for three, no, halfway through the first quarter. Joshua with another offensive rebound, spins out of traffic, resets the signs grand. Joshua has created extra possessions of three times for the Spy Ponders, and here's a fourth. Yes, Coyne missed the layup, Joshua follows it up, count the basket, and Jelani Joshua will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Bing, bang, boom, Joshua is rewarded by with his extra effort with a shot at the basket, finishes through contact, and gets a free throw. Number 20, Philip Cherry Jr. checks into the Spy Ponder lineup. He replaces Elon Signs Grant, and we have a timeout on the floor. I believe it's a Lexington timeout. So Joshua shows the folks at home, you young players, that you don't have to be an outstanding and effective ball handler or shooter to play on a basketball court. There's a spot for you if you can be, be an energy player or someone that keeps possessions alive, and Joshua is showing you the way right there. Well, it's actually a great backstory to Jelani Joshua, Scott, in that he, when he was a sophomore, he was actually the bench coach for Jack Wood's JV team. And, he, and just like you said, if you work hard, anything can happen. And now he's worked his way all up to a starting position in the five for Arlington here tonight. And for all, all season so far, he's been in the starting lineup. That's an amazingly inspirational story. And, you know, it, it, it just it's what these, this high school athletics is all about. Yep. It's, it's providing opportunities for players to gain confidence and display their effort and energy and skills. So Stephen McGilvery is at the table. He'll check in at the next opportunity. He's probably coming in for Joshua as Joshua has one free throw at the line. If he makes it, McGilvery will come in. And you see effort like that, Don, and that's the stuff that kind of gets contagious on a team. If people say, oh, if, if, if Joshua is going to Gonna, gonna provide that kind of energy, and he's someone that maybe doesn't have outstanding skills. I better pick my pace up. I better play as hard as I can. You know, McNamara is looking at that and saying, "Well, I better pick my pace up." Spypon is lead at 12-4. Joshua has seven. Allington's depth is going to be tested a little bit tonight, Scott. We know that Nick Corrales is out as that shot there by Lexington is no good. That Nick Corrales is out until at least the first of the year. Uh, Will Clifford out for the f entire season with the collarbone problem. And now we're finding out that Joey Pazia is un uh, unable to play tonight due to injury. So uh, Arlington really only dressed 10 players. They've already used seven. Spy Ponders, even with a thin bench, could be an issue tonight. It is very hot in this gym. You know, I was not making a joke before, Don, oh. when I said it's hot in here. I mean, it is really hot, and it's, it could take a toll on the players if the game gets uh, long. David Zur with the basket for Lexington cuts Arlington's lead to six. 12 6 ponders, 2.56 remaining, first quarter, and now a traveling violation committed by Arlington. Arlington's offense, if they've had a problem during the John Bowler era, it's that they struggle to get the ball to both sides of the court on offense. They have a tendency to stay one sided, and anytime you see that ball cross over to one side off the half court and the other side back, that's when they're going to be effective. Good pressure here by Allington. Causes a steal. Cherry comes up with it. Goes to the hole. No. Rebound by Gascoigne. Comes flying in and lays it in. Gascoigne, inspired by Joshua, gets a putback of his own, flying through the air like he was defying gravity. 14-6 by Pond. is 227 remaining first quarter. Ayala, he's been shut out so far in the first quarter. Gascoigne... Saved it, and now they're gonna get James on a reach and foul. That was a tough break because Gascoigne and Scott, I'm sure you coach this back in the day, you really, as a young player, you don't really wanna save the ball underneath your own basket because if it goes to the other team, they're right there to score. And then unfortunately, uh, doubling up the problem was then get James committed a reach and foul. And that's a conundrum for Coach Bowler. You don't wanna be critical of a player when he's trying his best, but you know that time his, his outstanding effort kinda got in the way. Zur with the baseline jump shot is good. He has four for Lexington. And it's 14-8 Spy Ponders with about two minutes to go first quarter. For Arlington, number 10, Miles Hess into the lineup. As Gascoigne goes to the basket, a lot of contact. Everybody yelling at the officials for a call, none made. And now gonna have a cheap reach and foul against Arlington. Well, I mean, if that's not a foul, I don't know what it is. He got hit in the arm and the body as they moved him off his line. It didn't bother him though, he finished at the rim. Right. And that's the that's the, the hallmark of a senior captain forward, someone that can make plays and not be bothered by contact. Foul called against Miles Hess, his first, third on the team. 
Minute 51 remaining, first quarter, and the spy pond has caused another turnover. Great defense there by Stephen McGilvery, denying the baseline and causing the turnover. So the, the officials have sent a message to both teams that they're not going to be calling and helping players out through minimal and what's called uh, incidental contact. You saw it there. They, they didn't call the foul on both ends of the floor, so at least they're being consistent. Uh, Mason Hatfield committed the turnover, and as soon as he committed the turnover, the buzzer went for him to check out of the game. He's immediately replaced. McNamara to the hole, lays it up and in. A little bit of flex action. McNamara curls off the, the down screen, comes in and finishes at the rim, at the rim with a nice feathery touch. Theodore Schroeder, number 23, into the Lexington lineup, and great defense by Philip Cherry Jr. Forces yet another Lexington turnover. Cherry Jr., another player inspired by the play of Joshua. He forces a, a turnover, a, an unforced error, if you will, and the Spy Ponders. You know, John, I'll tell you, that second half, the way the Spy Ponders responded, went on that run. You know, you never want to say a, a team is at the crossroads early in the season, but they've been kind of the bullies on the block for so long. And I'm not sure if they have that kind of talent to bully teams. So it's going to have to be through solely through effort. And I think they learned that in the second half of the last game. And I think it bodes well moving forward. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, head of basketball operations, Tim Shuler, talking to him before the game. He said that he felt like the season started in the second half of that Watertown game. That they finally brought it all together. I mean, this was a team that's been averaging 49 and a half points a game. They scored 26 in that third quarter. So... They're starting to get it together. Well, I think what 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 maybe kind of clicked, and whether they clicked on their own or was Coach Bowler that nudged them there, but they're they're kind of it's fast paced now. And I, I think going into the season, people thought I know I thought they were going to have to slow things down, be a little bit more deliberate. But I think the answer for them is no. It's it's fast paced to the basket, finish at the cup. Oh, we break the huddles in a minute 19 to go first quarter. The Spy Ponders lead at 18-8. McGilvery to the basket, lays it in. McGilvery through contact at the basket. And right now, the Spy Ponders are playing with high confidence. 20-8, Ponders, their largest lead of the game. You know, I, I said early that I thought Lexington was playing with a little bit of energy and effort, but they seem spooked right now. It's kind of same old, same old for Lexington. That's a travel as a player gathered his feet. The three-point shot was no good. McGilvery with the great hustle. Ponders have numbers four on two. Yes, he might have got away with a trap. Oh, my oh, gosh, yeah. that's not a good call, I don't think. No, I don't believe it was, Don, and that's the one where... The player bailed. He well, had the position, and then he bailed. You know, Don, I tell you, it's, it, it's, I really believe they need that half circle that they have in, at all the levels now, and that player was underneath the basket. Right. You can't slide in underneath the basket. Was he there? Was he not? I, I really don't know, but the problem is he's, he's sliding underneath the basket when the player's already in his shooting motion, right. and it's just not a fact. It's just not fair is what it really isn't. So... You know, bad call, everybody's got to move on. I thought Hess might have got away with the travel even before that. Yeah. But uh, Coach Bola calling for another carry violation. They already called one on Will Amsler earlier. Not a steal by Arlington. McNamara, left hand, lays it in. McNamara. Great pass by Swift. Shows outstanding and effective dexterity as he finishes the basket with his left hand. The Spy Ponders are invading the space of the Lexington Minutemen right now as they finish at the cup on the other end. David Zur has come off the bench with six points for the Minutemen, but the Pondas still lead it by 12 with 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. Let's see what the Pondas get off for a final shot. McNamara baseline drive, fades away, pulls, shots long, rebound fought for. Lexington comes up with it. They're going to try a shot at the end oh. of the quarter. It will not go, and that will be the end of the first quarter. The score at the end of the first quarter is Arlington 22 and Lexington 10. Friday night at the Tozlowski Gymnasium. Where would you rather be than right here? And right now in the Spy Ponders come out with a little pep in their step, some energy. They were sparked early by Joshua, who got a, who extended plays and, and, and got them a, a hoop and a harm basket. But they kind of all took their cue from him. And right now there's a question being posed to Lexington and Coach Reggie Hobbs. Are you going to match Arlington's effort? Because if you not aren't tonight... This is going to be a lopsided score, yep. and it's not going to be pleasant because it is hot in here tonight. You know, I was going to try to figure out what Arlington has done defensively against Jason Ayala. As I mentioned, he's averaging about 22 a game, but I, I don't even see how Lexington's even had him involved in their offense so far tonight. Well, he got, he got spooked early on by the player invading his space. He threw up a tough shot and then turned the ball over, and I don't know he, whether it was his choice or Coach Hobbs, but he hasn't been bringing the ball up after that. 
you know, he just really he doesn't seem assertive out there. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's been number five. Will Amsler has been doing most of the ball handling uh, duties for Lexington. And if you're a new player from California, you know, you know, I don't care how good you are. You know, he probably thinks, oh, well, yeah, oh, it's tough to play at Arlington on a Friday night. Well, you have to live it to understand it. And Amsler has lived it and understands it. One two two zone for Lexington. They'll either look to trap in the corner. They're trying to get the the, oh, the ball. Great move by Jelani Joshua. Wow. Bing, bang, boom, Joshua picks up right where he leaves off. He had a nice rest in during that first quarter. Coach Bola spelling his players a little bit. As we mentioned, Allington with a short bench tonight. There's Ayala, a lot of tricky dribbling, and he's called for traveling. And he is frustrated right there. He doesn't like that call. Again, his space got invaded. He, was, he created the contact and didn't get the call. Hey, buddy, this is... Middlesex League basketball, you've got to fight through that contact, prove that you're not going to let it bother you, and then maybe the officials will give you that call. Ooh. Bad pass. Steal by Lexington, and laying it up and in is Will Amsler. He right. has his first two points of the game. Jerry kind of got a little bit lackadaisical, and that is the absolute last thing you need to be doing when you're up 14. And Ooh. there's another one, and Coach Bowler can't be happy with he sees you, if you want to pass the ball to one side or the other on a 1-2-2, two, two, you got a ball fake one way and come back the other way. You have to move that defender out of your way. Elon signs Grant back into the Allington lineup. Again, Lexington able to get a deflection. Apparently, Allington got a touch on that, and it'll be Lexington ball. Uh, right now, those, those uh, lackadaisical passes that didn't use a pump fake are... I've kind of energized Lexington by default. Let's see if they can do anything with it here and whether Ayala's going to get himself going. Trying to go through the double team, looking for a foul. He's not going to get it. Joshua try to get it to McNamara. Great save by Ansler. Stolen by Gascoigne. Gascoigne with a little Euro step. Had the shot blocked. Joshua up strong. Count the basket. And Jelani Joshua will go to the line with a chance for another three-point play. <laughs> Joshua, bang, bang, boom. A real man finishing through contact at the rim. And Ayala could take a page out of Joshua's book. Joshua is worrying about doing the best he can do, trying his hardest, and not whether a referee is going to blow the whistle. And if he's going to worry about other people helping him out, he's not focused on the right thing. He's not going to have success. A dozen for the senior forward, wow. Jelani Joshua. It's career high, probably. I would imagine he had 10 in a prior game this season, but he's got 12, and we haven't even played 10 minutes in this game. So Ayala now is oh. is forcing it up, yep. and that is not what you want to see. I think Coach Hobbs should get him a little bit of a break right now, especially if he has trouble here. He made a nice pass there to Anza. Anza tried to flip it up with the left hand, no go there. Lexington needs to pull the ball out and run some half-court offense. They can't run with the spy ponders. They don't have the athletes or the experience to do it, especially in this building. Swift, deep corner three, no. Anzler with the rebound. Dribbles it into three Allington plays. Now he kick, able to come into the lane, spins, and they're going to get an Allington foul. They are, and Amsler gets the foul called for him because he hasn't been looking around asking for help. Right. And so when he gets contact, if it's, oh, you got hit, there's a few free throws for you. But Amsler's got to pull that out and run offense. They, they can't run with the spy pointers. They Early offense isn't going to work for them unless they're looking at a wide open shot. They, they, they just don't have the type of players that can, that can create in that, that, that environment. And they've got to give themselves an advantage and work an offense that helps them. Signs Grant called for the foul, his first fifth on the team. Lexington with just three team fouls so far. Ansler, one of two, but a lane violation will be called against Arlington, and Ansler will get another free throw. I didn't really see who stepped in, but it did look like there was action early. I think that uh, number four, Charlie Bimsburg, tried to step in, but was probably beaten to it. Ansler takes advantage of the free shot and makes it. 27-14 ponders, 5.46 remaining first half. So 1-2-2 two, two offense, you gotta use pump fakes, get it in the middle, and when it goes to the middle, look opposite. Nice pass down by the signs, Grant to Gascoigne on the baseline, and he reverses it up and in. Gascoigne has made a living for four years on that baseline against zone defenses, knows what to do with it, finishes at the cup through contact. 
And you're right, Scott. That looked like a little travel there. You're right, Scott. I think uh, Coach Hobbs has decided to give Ayala a little bit of a break. He's out of the Lexington lineup. And now in the rebounding action, they're going to get number 24, David Zur, Lexington's leading scorer so far tonight with a foul, and that is his second. I think that's a, that's a sound move by Coach Hobbs. And now, you know, I mean, it's a long game, uh, Jazz and Ayala. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to quit? Are you going to keep working hard and trying to fight through this? And so he's being asked a question there on the bench, and we'll see what the answer is when he comes back in the ballgame. Joshua into the lane. Now he comes back, has the ball blocked, I believe, by Zur. And now the ball's tipped high up into the air by Sines Grant out of bounds. It will remain Lexington ball. Well, Zur learned the hard way uh, what Joshua can do around the basket. And that time he met his energy, blocked a shot right at the basket, and back we come the other way. Kind of Lexington's got a feeling their way through this contest. It's 29-14, and if they can get a couple of baskets and maybe a couple of stops, we can have an interesting uh, ball game. Arrest for Jelani Joshua. Sines Grant with another steal, and now a foul will be called. I think that's going to go against Amsler. Probably a smart foul by Amsler as, as uh, Ilan Signs Grant was off to the races for an easy two. Uh, Signs Grant, another deflection. The Spy Ponders have just fed, fed off it tonight. You know, anytime that you turn your back on a defender when dribbling the basketball, you better assume he's coming at you for a double team. And that time the, the, the Lexington player did and now with those back-to-back -back fouls by the minute, and the team fouls are even at five. Each team has one more to give between the other team will be in the bonus, before the other team will be in the bonus. Anzler for three, off the mark. Signs Grant fights for it. Gascoigne says, you know what? Let me just come in and get this. Gascoigne shows senior leadership with effort and desire. There's something exactly, he just said, give me that. Both were snatching away, you, know, you little guys, get out of here. Yeah, they were a, snatching away and handed it off. There were four people who had an, an, a, a chance for that rebound, and Gascoigne came from a few feet away and said, let me make sure we get this one. Absolutely. You know, That's it's funny, did. Don, I was, I was watching the last game, and I was talking to the professor afterwards, and you, you, you look at Gascoigne, and, you know, uh, uh, a neophyte or someone who hasn't watched a lot of basketball might look and say, well, I don't know how much he's improved, but when I look and, you know, it's the little things, right? It's the not fouling when he used to foul. It's the not traveling when he used to travel. His game is all fine-tuned. It's, it's filled with confidence and direction and purpose. He knows what's going to happen out there if he does certain things. So he does the right things at the right time all the time. And that's what a senior is all about. Yep. And congratulations to James has found out that he has accepted an offer to play basketball next year at Emerson I believe it's still Emerson College. All these colleges are going to university. I think it's still Emerson College. So congratulations. That's going to be it's going to be a good thing for him being a senior now, knowing where you're going next year. You don't have to worry about anything else. You don't have to worry about impressing any recruiters. As McNamara hits a three, McNamara says, "Hey, wait about uh, what about me? I'd like to get talked about up here." Bing bang boom, deep from him. But congratulations to James Gascoigne, his family, and to Coach Barrett over there at. Emerson College for recruiting James, and I agree 100%. You make a decision like that, the weight's off, you can focus on basketball. I expect an outstanding year out of James Gascoigne. It'll be funny because uh, Colin McNamara playing at WPI, it, that's in the same league as Emerson, so those guys will be going at it next year against one another, the Allington High alumni. McNamara pull up jump shot is good. And McNamara says, so you're even going to talk about my, my big brother and not talk about That's me. Right. He's stopping and popping and saying, no, I'm part of this action too. 11 for the sophomore. That shot is off the window, way off the mark. And Arlington's not going to pull away in this game, Scott. It's 34-14. And Lexington's going to have to make a run or otherwise they're going to start the bus early tonight. Here comes McNamara, coast to coast. He tries to dump it to Swift. Good defense there by Lexington's number 21, Henry Graff, who stole that pass. Rare instance of a little bit of too unselfish play from McNamara. You get that close to the basket, finish it, son. Signs Grant, that's a charge. I agree with that one. Now that time, the defensive player got the position, held the position. It was Dante Ortiz, the co-captain of the Minutemen and an offensive foul will be called against Signs Grant. And in both cases, I don't fault the Spy Ponder player as their coach Bowler slaps uh, Grant on the hands. I mean, I want my players taken to the basket strong and with purpose, and we get charges. Who cares? We're playing one way and one way only. Jelani Joshua back into the Spy Ponder lineup, and Signs Grant's going to get a little bit of a blow here with 
Just about three minutes remaining in the first half. The Spy Ponder's defense has been unbelievably, astonishingly effective and energized all game long. Holding Lexington to just 14 points here in the first half thus far. Stepping out is the big fella, Cronin. Shot unlucky for him, round and out. Buzzard's luck there for Cronin, break for Arlington. Joshua skies for that rebound. He put, pulled it right off the basket. He is just brimming with confidence. 13 on the shot Give clock. it to him. They go inside to Joshua. He's double teamed immediately. They kick it around. They get an open look for Sam Swift for three, and he nails it. The ball rotated to the other side. Swift stepped in with confidence and buried it, but that play was made by Joshua, who didn't quit on a tie, ball, a, a tie up. Yeah, a little spin move in the lane there by Ansler lays it in. He has a half dozen on the night. Ansler is trying his best to do what he can out there and isn't really being joined by any of his teammates. They're gonna have to match his effort in the second half. There's Amps over the tip. Two minutes remaining, first half. McNamara on the feed from Gascoigne, lays it in with the left hand. Gascoigne gets the basketball at the foul line, does what he's supposed to, pivoted towards the basket and look for an open man. Minute 45 remaining, first half. Ortiz for three, way off the mark. Guess coin with the rebound. This is outstanding. The spy ponders are really, this is about as good as you can look. Guess going at a foot on the line. That's got to be a two point basket for James Gascoigne. Serendipity for the spy ponders, but you, the, you get those serendipitous moves and baskets when you're playing hard and effective. 41 16 ponders, minute 20 to go, first half. Rebound fought by Joshua. And Cronin would tie it up, and are they going to get Joshua on a foul? Yeah, so that's a tough call there, but again, Joshua, Cronin understands and says, Cronin understands how hard Joshua's been playing and matches that energy and is able to rip a ball away from him and cause a foul. And so you see in pockets of it there by the Minutemen who are kind of learning as they're going how hard you have to play to match this effort. But again, the score is already lopsided. This is a tremendous... Uh, half by the Spy Ponders. I don't even think they've they've made too many shots. Only three players have scored for Lexington so far. One of them is not Lexington's leading scorer, Ayala, who remains. Nope, he's back into the Lexington lineup actually for this final minute 16. But I mean, Scott, they they can't go go on without him. If he's scoring 22 a game for him, he has zero. Now you know why they're down by 25. Yeah, and you you have to wonder as you see he's not he's back in the ball game now. What really took Coach Hobbs so long? I mean, if you're gonna take him out to make it to, to, to try to settle him down and teach him a lesson of how hard he has to play, he gotta put him back into the ball game to demonstrate it. Yeah. You know, we then showed a coach, uh, shot of Coach Hobbs and he seems a little bit dejected. Coach Hobbs is no stranger to basketball. He shouldn't be affected by a 41 to 18 lopsided score. Be positive, Coach Hobbs. So you pump your team up, get them to, to, to play energized and have fun. Cronin hits both free throws. He has six, as does Zer and Anzo, the only three players for the Minutemen to score. For Arlington, number three, Owen Olsen into the lineup as Coach Bowler has opted to have Brendan McNamara sit this final minute and 12, which is now, well, now a minute three remaining first half. Well-earned rest by McNamara. I, I call him the babyface assassin. You know, he doesn't look like, a, you know, a, a tough kid, but he is. He's strong. He look like a strong kid, but he is. They look at his super sensational speed, but he does. The baby face assassin playing well. Five in the shot clock. Ponders have to get hurry here to get a shot off. Swift, I don't know if he sees the clock. They get it into Gascoigne. They don't get it into Gascoigne. Gascoigne throws it up there. Didn't matter anyway. 24, excuse me, 30 second shot clock violation against Arlington. Yeah, I don't know if how much Coach Bowler is going to mind about that. I mean, the shot clock is going off because they're being patient, trying to get a good shot off. Right. And, you know, that's the, those are the mistakes that don't bother you. But a 14 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. A little floater there, no good. Rebound Lexington, they could kind of hold for a final shot if should they want to, but instead they go into Zur, Zur gets the roll. And Zur finishes in the basket through contact, but they leave the Spy Ponders with the final shot of the half. And we'll see if they come up with an effective uh, strategy and one hitter. 15 seconds ago, Ponders lead it 41 20. Gascoigne to the basket, lays it up. No. Ayala with the rebound. He's going to try to get a final shot off of the Minutemen. He goes coast to coast. He goes up and under. He flips it up. He doesn't get it. Rebound fought for. No, Gilbrey comes away with it. He might have traveled, but I think the officials elected to just let the first half run out. And the first half horn sounds. The Spy Ponders 
That kind of last play there pretty much summed up the first half for both Ayala and the Lexington Minutemen. You know, the, the, the execution might have been there, but the effort and energy and focus really wasn't. And that's why this score is lopsided at 41-20. But, you know, quite frankly, Don, I, and I'm Coach Bowler, I, I look up and see I'm only up by 21. And, you, and even if you're, if you're just tuning in now, you're only up by 21. This was a dominant performance by the Spy Ponders. And, you know, they need to keep that up in the second half. The score at the end of the first half, Arlington 41, Lexington 20. Scott and I will be back with second half action. You are watching ACMI Sports' coverage of Arlington basketball. Where would you rather be than right here and right now? And getting ready for second half action, Don Phelan along with Scott Zwick, Alex Van Thong, our producer, and a group of Arlington High School volunteers bringing you this great first half so far tonight with the Sky Ponders with a 21 point lead. Scott, I expected a good performance from Arlington, but I didn't expect them to be up by 21 at the half. And I certainly didn't, I don't think anybody expected uh, Joshua to come in here and basically dominate the first half with, I don't know how many points he have, uh, 12 points and uh, I don't know, four, 10, 12 rebounds. You know, that's the story of the first half, if you ask me. That kind of energy and effort was infectious, and the Spike Bonders fed off it and rode to a 21 point lead. Allington, as Scott mentioned, was led by Jelani Joshua with. Hold on one second. Make sure that's phonetic so we can say their names right. I'm talking to our producer, Alex Van Thong. He's going to give me the list of all the other people bringing you, doing the hard work tonight here, bringing you all this great action. But uh, so anyway, Joshua with the dozen in the first half. And uh, Brendan McNamara came on strong in the second quarter. He ends up with 13 halftime points. Oh, uh, The story coming to the game was kind of, you know, we heard a whole lot about Jazzy, uh, Jazin Ayala. And McNamara says, I don't know who that is. He, that, that's the kid from Oakland, but I'm the kid from Arlington. And what I do is I play with energy and effort. And he, he scout scored him 14 nothing or, or whatever hammer he had. And so, you know, Ayala's got a choice. He can keep going and try to figure this out or, or, or he's gonna have a tough night uh, uh, with a lopsided score. Ayala held scoreless in the first half. And we had been told that he was averaging 22 per game. So it looks like they're gonna try to go back inside to Cronin, who had an effective first half. One of the few players who were able to get much done with the Spy Ponders' body defense. Lexington comes up empty in their first second half possession. Now Ayala's gonna get his first points of the game right now. Almost and didn't. And it rolls in for Ayala. And we'll see if that gets him going. Finally, the Miniman get a deflection of their own. But a little French pastry on that layup for Ayala. I think he might have taken the short too. If that one spins out, he might have been done for the game. Now McNamara goes to the, lay, uh, to the basket, doesn't get it. He gets the loose change and fires up a three around the rim and out. Gascoigne fights for the rebound. Ayala comes up with a minute man with numbers if they push. Ayala with a little pep in his step right now after he put the ball in the basket. And that's a charge right there, absolutely. Joshua steps in front and says, I'm sorry Ayala, you gotta stop and pop or do something else because that's an offensive foul. Did a nice job selling it too. I think the contact was there, not a lot, and Joshua did the right thing, a smart play, go down. Make, make the official make a decision. 100%. That's exactly what happened. And you know, you know, Don, I've told you many times, I'm not a huge fan of that of that particular foul call. You know, you, you pass it off, but it is a foul. Players can't run over other players. And Joshua was Johnny on the spot and made an a, a important and effective decision. And while we have a moment as they wipe up the sweat after that play. We do have tonight's crew list. Stars is on audio. Jen Lynchfield is our director. Felix Morand is on camera one. And of course, Alex Van Thong, the producer, and also covering camera two. So thank you all very much. This yeah, crowd is effective and energized and set. This crowd is, and so is our crew. The crew and crowd do an outstanding work. Yes, going got bottled up there on the baseline. Swift is gonna take a pull up three. No, long rebound into the corner. Brendan McNamara, lucky man on the spot, comes away with it for the Ponders. Lexington has picked up the energy in the second half, but they can't get a defensive rebound. Gascoigne with the call for traveling. As I, uh, you at home, you have uh, YouTube, you guys can rewind that and see if I'm mistaken here. I thought he maybe he slid his foot a little bit, but it looked like a pretty clean play to me. The officials are just eager to. Load that whistle on that little uh, stutter step move. 
6.15 remaining third quarter. Allerton still up by 19. No luck there for Lexington. For Cronin. Now Ortiz is gonna take a very difficult pull up jump shot, no. Gascoigne with a strong rebound as Cronin was right there on his back. Ron Sands Grant in the lineup for Arlington. Arlington with their starting five. Gascoigne goes into the paint, gets it blocked, stays with it, and makes a beautiful bounce pass to Jelani Joshua, who lays it in. Gascoigne shows the power of per perseverance right there as he makes a miss, rebounds, and a beautiful bounce pass to Joshua, who has the game of his life and knows exactly what to do with it tonight. Ortiz bottled up on the baseline by Swift. Tough shot there. Joshua might have taken another charge. That one might have been worse than the first as he took that one right in the face. And in the rebounding action, Case Cronin's able to lay it in. Cronin f finishes at the 10, but Joshua got hit right in the kisser right there. And he's, hopefully he's not spitting out chicklets. And then reaching there by Ortiz, but as Scott mentioned, or Lexington a little bit more aggressive defensively here to begin this third quarter. Inside Joshua eludes Cronin and lays it in again. Joshua says, I don't care if you hit me in the mouth, I'm gonna keep trying. He goes down the other end and finishes through contact at the rim. Shot up, no good for Will Ansler, but he is fouled on the play. You know, Ansler, he's chugging along. He's, he's, he's trying to be effective. For Lexington, if you see players invading your space, you have two choices. You're gonna to have to fight through that contact, and if you're off the ball, you're gonna to have to go back door. But things that are gonna work against the Spy Ponders, ball fakes are gonna to work to get yourself, get that player off of you that's in front of you. You're gonna to have to be, and you gotta be creative. You're gonna to have to just dribble through it and find a new way to, to, to get players off your back. One of two for Ansler, for Lexington, number 21, sophomore Henry Graff into the lineup. He replaced Hatfield. Lexington has pushed Arlington way away from the basket to start their offense, and that's why they are effective right now. I think Lexington's picked the pace up on defense. Yeah, the sad thing for Lexington, though, is they've only chopped off one point off the Arlington lead almost halfway through the third quarter as the Ponders still lead it by 20. Ortiz to the basket. He's fouled, and that's going to go against Joshua. And I believe that is will be the third foul on Jelani Joshua. And Joshua there kind of tried to use the principle of verticality. He went straight up. His body might have been moving a little bit, but he had the right idea. Uh, Lexington, it's, it's 45. It's tw a 20 point game. You know, they, as you said, Don, they only picked up two points. But, you know, right now, now the kind of <laughs> question swings back for this by Ponders. Are you going to match their energy and effort? Because if not, you know, eventually, that ball's gonna start going in the basket. This isn't rocket science out here. Yep. Ortiz, co-captain of the Minutemen, scoreless himself so far tonight, looking for his first point of the night, and he gets it. 45-26 ponders, 420 remaining third quarter. See if we can get this offense started a little bit, a little bit closer to the basket. They push him away, there it is, there it is. That's much better. McNamara's gonna step back, take the three, and make the three. Bing, bang, boom, the baby-faced assassin from way downtown. 16 for the sophomore. Tying Joshua for high point on us for the Ponders, each with 16. The 32 of Arlington's 48 combined. This McNamara is a tough kid. His brother's tough, he's tough. Ortiz for corner three. That might have been blocked by McGilvery, who checked into the Arlington lineup along with Philip Cherry Jr. Bounce pass to Gascoigne back out to McNamara. Gascoigne has just made one good decision after another out there tonight. Gascoigne will go all the way to the cup and lay it in. And that's what happens on a basketball court. If you continue to make the right decision, the plays open up for you and eventually end up scoring a basket. If you focus on scoring the basket, they're just not gonna come. Double figures for the tri-captain. James Gascoigne now with 10. So he, Joshua, and McNamara have combined for 42 of the 50 Arlington points. Both McNamara and, and uh, Gascoigne are tough players. Gascoigne cuts off the baseline. That's a good move there by the big fella, Cronin, spinning to the basket, and I think they're gonna get McGilvery on that foul. Yeah, this Cronin's a nice player in his own right. You know, he doesn't quit. He's tough around the basket. You gotta move him off his spot, or he's gonna finish at the cup but 
you know, you look out there for the, the minute, man, there's not a whole lot of options. I can see why Ayala is scoring 20 through a night because, you know, I, I, I don't think uh, the, the senior captain Ortiz is an outstanding shooter or scorer himself. And Don, is, is Ayala trying to get the basketball here? I mean, I don't know. I just don't see that they're really designing. I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to have to make a more conscious step to see if Allington is shutting him down defensively or they're just not having him involved in the offense. I, I don't really know what his deal is, but he's been held to just two points on a breakaway layup. That's all he has. And he just hasn't been in the, involved in the action no. at all. Nope. I mean, he's, not, he's not guarding McNamara. McNamara, beautiful finish at the cup. Great move by Brennan McNamara for two. He now has 18 of the spawn, Spy Ponder 52. They go inside, great defense by Allenton. McGilvery came from the backside, Gascoigne from the front, and they get another steal. Philip Chevy Jr. to the basket. Ooh, can't get the roll. McGilvery puts it up. He is fouled on the play. McGilvery's effort tonight has been super and sensational. He's just another in a long line of spy ponders who have raised their game to be uh, sensational from an effort standpoint. and. But you know, you go back there. That play by McNamara, that one where, where he he pivots, gets a triple threat, little crossover there to the basket, finishing out of the cup. That's a, that's a super move. That's a move. That that's a game changing move. That's one that you just don't see a lot of players able to make out there. Yep. Miles Hess into the Allenton lineup, and he gives Brendan McNamara a break. Stephen McGilvery makes both free throws. He now has four on the evening, and the Spy Ponders have doubled up the minute men. It's 54-27 Allington with 2.18 remaining in the third quarter. Swift and McGivory, a couple of football players are playing well tonight, and this is kind of a, a football-like type action out there. Lots of uh, contact, lots of activity. And staying with it there is number two for Lexington. That's Tucker Crowley. As his first basket of the evening. It's good to see Coach Hobbs being energetic on the sidelines. We saw, I saw him the first, he seemed a little bit upset, and I'm sure he wasn't enthusiastic about his team's play, but you got to pump these kids up. you got to show them a way to have fun and be yeah, effective. Well, with the steal, but then Cherry stole Woo! it back. Hess had the shot blocked from behind by Amsler. Here comes Lexington the other way. Well, Amsler. Nice just pass absolutely there. puts the hammer down. I don't know if that shot was blocked or not. It went out of bounds, it hit the basket support. I think that's what Dave Kuzmich is going to come in and ask the official if that shot was at all blocked by Arlington, in which case it would be Lexington ball, and that's exactly what we're going to have. Kuzmin, a veteran official, goes back to my days as a player. Dave Kuzmich gave me a technical foul and threatened to throw me out of a game. You probably deserved it. I sure did, my temper had, had, had risen to unacceptable levels, and he was there to Get, put me in my place. But well, the only thing that's interesting that the officials did not do a good job of there, in my opinion, is uh, they reset the shot clock. Yep. And that shot was a block shot that went out of bounds, and the shot clock should not have been reset. But it worked out for Arlington anyway, as Lexington unable to score. Basically, Lexington scoring just 10 points per quarter, and now Cherry's going to be called for a traveling violation. Lexington has picked up their effort and energy on the defensive uh, floor side, but they really haven't translated on the offensive side. Right. And to Arlington's credit, they really haven't dropped their energy too much on the defensive end, and that's why the score isn't really high the score. Yeah, if Ayala's not going to get his 22, I don't know where the offense is going to come from for Lexington as he goes to the basket there and gets fouled and goes the line for two. Because basically Lexington scored 10 first quarter points, 10 second quarter points, and they have nine third quarter points with a minute and three to go. Yeah, and you see it, you see him, you know, kind of kind of taken to the basket there. You know, I said at halftime, Don, that, you know, anytime you have a lopsided score and then you get a big, nice 10 minute break at the halftime, basically the team that's that, that that's behind, they're being asked a question, you know, what are you gonna do here? Are you gonna keep trying? Are you gonna find a way to be effective? Or are you gonna quit? Because those are the only two chances you have. They're not gonna dismiss you and let you go home early. This game's going to finish no matter what, and hopefully this Ayala will keep trying and, and, and learn how to be effective. One of two for the senior transfer, and the uh, score with a minute to go in the third quarter is 54-30 Arlington. Swift with a three, no. Here comes Lexington, a little spin move there. That might have been a travel, but laying it in with the left hand is Ansler. Ansler with an outstanding spin move and finish with the basket. We remember last year in this game at, at, at this place, his brother Jack Angler threw the hammer down, a two-handed dunk in traffic. Now, I don't know if you ever saw that 
highlight, but they were in the half court set and his brother just took two steps and just threw the hammer down. So 34.8 seconds remaining, third quarter, 20 on the shot clock, Allington by 22. And you get the entry pass to McGilvery on the inbounds play. He's going to spin. He's going to throw it up with the left hand and lays it in. McGilvery perseveres with somebody in his face, and he's played an outstanding game. Anzo's going to take the pull-up shot. No. Hess with the rebound for the Ponders. Arlington can hold for a final shot with 13 seconds remaining. Third quarter up by 24. I tell you, I like this Miles Hess. He's a, a young kid, a super sophomore. He has a little, little flair to his game that I like. Cherry, no. McGilvery tip, no. Hess, can he hit it at the buzzer? Oh. No. Almost on cue there, John. Nice I was try. almost prophetic. Nice try. As Spy Ponders finished the third quarter strong, lead 56-32. And you know, John, you know, we were talking at, at, at halftime that, you know, that, uh, and you said uh, Coach Schuler told you that he thought the season started in the second half last week. And then we were talking, you know, you, you know, I, I see some some outstanding uh, Winchester coaches in front of me here. And, you know, this Red and the League can't like what they see here with the Spy Ponders, a team that's been in control of this league for several years, and this was supposed to be a down year, just really lopsiding and, 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 and pouring on a team like Lexington. Yeah, I, from what I'm told, it's, it's Belmont's league to lose this year, and everybody else on any given night can do it. And Arlington found that out the hard way in their second game of the season. They went into Woburn, difficult place to play. One would think Arlington would win that game. They did not, but they learned from it and came out with a great effort against uh, Watertown on Tuesday night. And I, I would say the second half of the Watertown game and the first half of this game might be as good as this team is going to play. Uh, yeah, right, Don? I mean, that's a great point. And the, 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 uh, the, they're more reliant on energy and effort than any team I can recall in the, the, at least the, the, the recent past. And, you know, you can control that. You can't control if the ball's going to go in the basket, but you can control how hard you try. And if they set the bar super duper high and they can meet that 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 bar, the, the sky's the limit for this team. Yep. yep. And while we have a moment, congratulations to Coach Bowler since the end of last season. Coach Bowler has had a baby girl, six months old now. And uh, so I've been taking a picture with a baby the other night. I said, who's that, Coach Bowler? He says, it's my daughter. I said, wow, congratulations, six months old. Bing, bang, boom for Coach Bowler and his wonderful family. Here's Philip Cherry Jr. ahead of the pack, and he lays it in. Philip Cherry Jr. hustles out in front of the back and gets rewarded with, a, with two points at the cup. Always nice when the, se when the second unit comes in and they play hard and provide defense, and there's a, a little look at Ayala hitting the long three. Uh, he's a lefty. He's one of those kids that has a left-handed stroke that he looks like he's actually right-handed, but obviously at 22 points tonight, he can score, and it's good to see him getting something going there. I'm actually rooting for this kid. I was rooting, obviously, uh, for the spy binders early, but I'd like to see him figure this out. So as we mentioned, Cherry Jr. getting on the score sheet. Hess still looking for his first points of the evening as the Minutemen get the turnover. Ayala for three, and now we're getting a little look at what this kid can do. Yeah, absolutely. Back to back threes. So he steps up with boys and confidence and buries it, and now he's doing a little bit of preening, and he needs to look up the scoreboard and look like he looked at it and see that he's still down 20, but a little bit of life for the Spy Ponders. But you know, I was about to say before, I was rudely interrupted by the Ayala three was I mean, Gascoigne looks like he's trying to make, kind of, kind of set the team record for most consecutive uh, good choices made in a row <laughs> on a basketball court. You know, and those kind of things get lost a little bit. But yep. when you when you don't make a mistake, you're playing well. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, for all said and done, as you know, Lexington making a little bit of a move here, still down by 20 with seven minutes to go. You know, it would be an epic fail for Arlington to lose this game, but Coach Bull is making sure that he's kind of put back in the regulars. He's got Signs Grant back in there to provide some energy. James Gascoigne is in there. Swift is in there. So his, his co-captains, his eligible captains right now are in the game. Brendan McNamara and the youngster, Miles Hess. They have to run offense, patient offense, to get that ball to move both sides. They're on one side now. See if they can get it to the other side. There it is. 
McNamara from just inside the three-point arc buries the shot. Yeah, this, you know, this, is not, this is rocket science. These coaches don't have magic plays. Steal by Arlington. And a good timeout by Coach Bowler resulted in a basket by Brendan McNamara to get it back up to 22 and a turnover created by his defense. And then right there, they don't listen to Coach Zwick up in the booth. Whoa. Whoa. Holy cow. Look at that pass. That was, that was a little bit too high. A little bit up high for Dante Ortiz. Yeah, Dante Ortiz isn't, isn't 22 foot 3 inches tall. Now the Allington net is still up on the rim. I got to fix that. Usually the officials fix that oh, during a dead me. ball. That and now bother me. veteran official Dave Kuzmich sees it. Ah, and they're going to take care of that. Yeah. He set me straight 20 years ago, and he's still on top of things, that Kuzmich. He's outstanding and effective. <laughs> Did you make a face when we first saw uh, that he was doing this game? Or was no, that, never. I didn't see that. Okay. Never. I didn't see that. I have the highest respect for Dave Kuzmich. <laughs> a fellow Arlingtonian Absolutely. and Notre Dame graduate. Absolutely. Good. Yes, you, I knew that. You no, know if you did. Go Irish. Oh, Speaking please. of the Irish, a big game next Saturday. Oh, as Gascoigne has two more. Gascoigne sets the club record with his 682nd positive and effective choice in a row. Yeah, that's a little extra step there, and that's been Gascoigne almost took that one off the rim. Two more. There's McNamara. He's going to go all the way. He got hit. He'll go to the line for two. So there's your dynamic duo for this team. Right in the same play, it's Gascoigne and McNamara. They're going to be the two players asked to produce for this team. And then the other players are going to fill in where they can and provide the energy and effort you know, that, 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 that makes them effective. And... You know, when players start to understand their role, as you see, is somebody's getting into it with Kuzmich, and I can tell you that's not going to end positive. <laughs> no, no, probably not. No. <laughs> I got yelled at. Uh, Brendan McNamara will go to the line for two free throws, but uh, before that happens, we have a timeout called by Coach Hobbs and the Minutemen. So Coach Hobbs must be... You know, it seems like his team's playing better, but they've actually lost points since the half started. So yeah, they started, that's going to be a little discouraging. Oh, no doubt. You know, they started the second half with uh, higher energy, and it didn't really materialize into to actual points. And then they kind of got a little bit disgruntled and, and, and maybe held their heads a little bit, and the spy ponders then kind of put that final nail in the coffin. But with, you know, 540... You know, the, you know, people think that there's like you know, garbage time in, in a varsity. There's no garbage time in a varsity nope. game. There's, there, everybody out there, there's a chance to, to improve and to learn. Sure. And, you know, the players that use this time that way will improve. And the ones that don't will pay the price for not improving. So in some recent Arlington alumni news, we found out that Dom Black is doing very well out at RPI. Your man, Don Black. My man, Don Black. I believe he was the co-Middlesex League MVP last year, if no I doubt. remember correctly. Of course, Colin McNamara is out at WPI, and WPI is 10-0 and at this wow. point. Wow. So he's doing really well. We saw him the other night, and I didn't get a chance to speak to him, but I saw Miles Robinson at the game the other night. How about this, Scott? He has an unbelievable sports career here at Arlington High School. He goes to Syracuse, plays two years, gets taken in some kind of supplemental... Two-time All-American. Was oh, that there. right? Yep. Did not know Two -time that. Two-time All-American. So now, come to find out, he gets picked up by the Atlanta United in the MLS. He gets drafted. And I think he kind of went up and down between, like, basically their AAA team. And they win the cup. He's a championship player now. And I guess he's taking courses online at the same time. And he has to go back down to Atlanta because I guess they start training right away because the season starts in March. So not much time off in the MLS. But... Congratulations. I guess the bottom line I want to say is, Miles Robinson, congratulations on your MLS Cup championship. Well, congratulations on that. And I kind of follow Miles Robinson's career because when he's the power positive guy, this kid. is a guy that's always, you know, looking for the good. He's always trying his best. But more importantly, he's always encouraging others to do it. He does that online and, and through, you know, through his person, his, his celebrity. And wow. so the guy like that deserves a championship. Awesome. I love seeing that. Bing, bang, boom. Yep, and I guess it's part of the program. You take courses online. Um, so 
Great news for Miles Robinson. Yeah, Miles Robinson's winning championships in soccer. He's working, working, trying to better himself intellectually. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ahead of the pack is Gascoigne. He's going to take it to the left hand and lay it in. And Gascoigne is in the flow now. He's in the zone. He knows what he's going to do. Everything's slowing down for him as he gets a deflection there. That's going to be a foul on Joshua as Zer made the nice little dump down pass to Cronin. Cronin tried to power it up, but Joshua's going to make him earn the two. Well, I'll good tell foul. You, that's a good foul. That's a great foul, but you know, well, it's this is bad news for the Middlesex League because I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of had Gascoigne as a, a, having a, a, a certain ceiling, and I look down there and see this play. Maybe that ceiling's a little bit higher than I thought, and, and maybe he can be a little bit more dynamic than I thought. And the, the, the way he's doing it is through play without playing without making mistakes and. The players that do that, those are very hard to beat, and they're very tough to play against. Cronin hits one of the two. He's the only Minutemen player in double figures for the evening with 10. Arlington leads at 65-39, coming up on the halfway point of the fourth quarter. I had a scout tell me once that they, they, they scouts like to look, look at, at, college scouts like to look at games with lopsided scores to see whether, no matter what side you're on the lopsided score, how you comport yourself, either up 20 or down 20, because it kind of says about who you are. That's, they, they say that's what your character is, how your effort is, energy. So you look at Cronin, high character player. You look at Gascoigne, high character player. McNamara, high character, a lot of high character players out there. Will Ansler with a nice basket for the Minutemen, and then in the ensuing action, a steal by Cronin, and a foul committed by Brendan McNamara. McNamara with just his second but that's the sixth team foul against Arlington, so Lexington will be in the bonus for the duration of the game. The last thing we want is for this oh. game to last any longer than oh. that. As we may have mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, oh. it is extremely, oh. extremely hot up here, high above courtside. You know the expression, heat rises? Well, I'm a believer in that now because we're, you know, 20 rows above courtside, and it is hot in here. Unbelievable. It's like it, it, it's, it, it's like... Africa hot up here, and I'll tell you something. You know, I, you know the, I'll tell you this: Kuzmich just blowing the whistle, and I'm, not, I'm really not, not 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 comfortable with what what I might do. We we had a 62 degree day here in Arlington, of course, so that's contributing to the warm weather here in the Tarzowski Gymnasium. But uh, I've been doing this for 34 years, and I don't know if I've in even some of the away games that we've done in playoffs and crowded gyms. I don't know if I've ever been this hot broadcasting a game you know that's not, not certain broadcasting number one but the, the hottest i've ever been ironically was at a lexington game I was watching lou finnegan years and years in their tiny gym and it was a playoff game i get in there i sat in there for two hours waiting for the game to start it starts at about 120 degrees in there i was passed out but he ended up going to bentley right yeah. had a good career at bentley career. right won a championship yeah yeah, yeah won, a, won a national championship yep and yep. went out to play for my men's league the huskies no kidding i didn't know that sure did won five championships with us. <laughs> the more you know. So we got 322 remaining in the ball game, and now a reach and foul will be called against number 12, Mason Hatfield. Hatfield didn't like the call. His second, fourth on the, excuse me, his first, fourth on the team. Well, Hatfield didn't like it, but the McCoys really loved that call. So Sam Swift checks out of the Arlington lineup. He's replaced by Stephen McGilvery. Sam. Swift with six points here tonight on two three-point field goals. Swift called for a whiteout tonight from the crowd on social media, and I'm sure if he got it, but let's see a few white shirts out there. Joshua to the basket, up and under, no. Fights for his own rebound, comes up with it, stays with it, no. Rebound fought for, and Ayala comes up with it for the Minuteman. Three Josh, minutes remaining in the game. Joshua will not stop playing with energy and effort. Tricky dribble by Ayala results in a turnover. Elon Sines Grant just said, you know, you want to try a tricky dribble, I'll take it from you. Hess for three. And my man Hess, bing, bang, boom, and the crowd exudes celebration. 68-41 pawn is another steal by Arlington. Looked like McGilvery was the player who caused that steal. I like this Hess, he's nifty, he's nifty. Just a sophomore. Super sophomore. Well, now Coach Bowler has the rest of the bench up there ready to check in the lineup as soon as possible. It'll be number three, Owen Olson will check in. Number 30, Jonathan Capillion will check in. Joshua hot to the hole. 
He's fouled on the play. And Joshua just will not stop bringing his, his motor is incredibly high. He's playing, now he's playing with high energy and confidence. And Don, you know, you mentioned that story earlier. I want to mention these people at home again because I think that's one of the best stories I've heard in a long time. I'm going to be preaching that all year long. Yeah, absolutely. On social media and everything. So you, know, you told us that this, this Joshua was a player that started out as a player that was allowed to be a, a, a I think he was the student manager student on the, J, manager of the JV team or a when coach, he was a you know, someone that's him. assisting the coach, yep. And, yep. You know, maybe practices with the team. So, you know, he decided to do that and to try try that and keep at it with that, but he never stopped trying, never stopped uh, uh, giving his effort, and he's living proof, folks, that you don't stop trying, you don't stop believing in yourself because this is what can happen. You go out there and you, you, you play an outstanding basketball game and everybody's proud of you. And it's all started because he didn't quit and he tried his best for a long period of time. Well, let's check the five in there for Alex right now. You get number 20, Philip Cherry Jr. You have number three, Owen Olson. Number 10, Miles Hess. Number 30, Jonathan Capillion. And number 23, Stephen McGilvery. And these are big minutes for these players. So, you know, a rotation is a one through whatever type of thing. And, you know, if you want to crack the rotation, first you got to get ahead of the person in front of you. And so, uh, this is where you do it. This is where, you know, that you know the bottom end of the rotation, the eighth man, ninth man, tenth man, whoever's playing out there, you know, this is how you crack it. You're out there and do your best out here and show something. Yep. It's important minutes. Lexington down 26 with a minute 39 remaining in the ball game. Pull-up shot by Hatfield is short. Fights for his own rebound, comes up with it, loses it off of the foot of Hess it will remain Lexington ball. And a hallmark of a John Bowler team is that everybody is on the same page defensively. You saw it there, players Pat, going under screens like they're supposed to and executing with effort and energy. Here's Zur, he was effective in the first half, been quiet here in the second half. Hess might have got a piece of his arm. They say no, they play on. And resulting is a layup for Henry Graff. Outstanding non-call by Dave Kuzmich <laughs> there as he lets contact go and mercifully the clock run. Yeah, we started late here tonight too. The girls game started a little bit late. The girls team victorious. Papillion off the window and that gets the crowd excited for Jonathan Papillion. And Papillion, bing, bang, boom. And everyone's getting into the action here at the Toslowski Gymnasium on a Friday night. Where would you rather be than right here and right now? 48 seconds remaining in the contest. Ponders by 26. Three point shot is no good, rebound. McGilvery got a little hand in there. Cross fought for Hatfield for the pull up jump shot, no. McGilvery keeps it alive and it goes to Philip Cherry Jr. Philip Cherry Jr with two points on the evening. Right now, the only player in the Allenton lineup that's in there is Owen Olsen has not scored. Let's see if the Ponders can get him a hoop. Ty Ponders looking to run effective offense here with their second and third, second and third team. Still by the minute, man. The pass. And the layup is no good. Capillion might have called, called for a foul there if the game wasn't 26 point blow with 10 seconds left. And Hess is gonna just dribble this one up. He's gonna give it to Cherry, and Cherry will be dribbling it out. This is about as effective and outstanding as I've seen the Spy Ponders in a long time. Don, I don't think we, I could have said this after any of the games last year. As much as I like the players on that team, this was a special effort and, 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 and big energy by Joshua who set the stage, showed the way, and the other Spy Ponders just followed through. Top scorers for tonight's game, Jason Ayala averaging 22. Spy Ponders hold him to nine. Case Cronin had 10. David Zur had eight. Dante Ortiz with one. Tucker Crowley with two. High point man for the Minutemen was Will Amzer with 11. For the Spy Ponders, Jonathan Capillion and Philip Cherry Jr. each with two. Miles Hess with three. Sam Swift with six, as did Stephen McGilvery have six. Brendan McNamara with 21. James Gascoigne with 14. In the ACMI player of the game, Jelani Joshua with 17 points. Upcoming games for the Spy Pond is kind of a weird schedule, Scott, for Arlington. They have a tournament at Malden Catholic during the school, break, school vacation week when they play two games 
in the Malden Catholic Tournament. Then Islington goes on a three-game road swing. So the next home game for the Spy Ponders is not until Tuesday, January 15th. So uh, check out the Spy Ponders on the road during that tournament or on those other three games. And otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing all you fans here on the 15th. The final score here from the Toslowski Gymnasium, Arlington High School Spy Ponders 71 and the Lexington High School Minutemen 45. Scott and I will be back with the post-game show. My name is Max Deluca, and if you're interested in pursuing a career in sports media, come on down to Studio B at 892 Mass Ave in Arlington. And welcome to the post-game show. I'm here with super sophomore Brendan McNamara. 21 points for Brendan. Brendan, you know, we were talking uh, on air tonight about how maybe something happened at the, set, at the halftime of the last game against Watertown. Something happened. What kind of click? Because the last three quarters, uh, six quarters have been outstanding. I mean, I've just, I know how much work I've put in and all the shooting and stuff. And I kind of, coaches were on me, just holding me accountable. I had some bad turnovers in the uh, first half of that Watertown game. And I kind of just knew what I'm capable of and, you know, just kind of got it together and got it in a little rhythm and clicked. Absolutely it clicked. So, you know, we talked during the broadcast that your big brother's up there having success at WPI. Tell me a little bit about what watching him play and watching him have success in this environment has done for you. I mean, four, he was four-year varsity player, and I was at, like, almost every game. So I saw his, his highs, his lows. I saw everything. So, I mean, I learned so much from him, just his composure and, you know, he just never got too high, too low, whether he had good, bad games. So, I mean, I learned a ton from him, even just in the playing with him, watching him, everything, just growing up. So, Absolutely. Yeah, he's a, he's a great role model. Well, I think he might be one of the greatest players in Ireland. Yeah. I, I call him the greatest player yeah, in Ireland. he history. might so, be. So you got, you got uh, big shoes to fill, but you're off to a great start. Tell me a little bit about your teammate Joshua, who – uh, you know, just played unbelievable tonight. Came out with high energy, high effort. Tell me about what it's like to practice with this young oh, man. I love, I love him. As a matter of fact, before this, we were chilling all day. Before this, we like all summer, all fall. Like when I see him around, I knew. I don't know if he knew that he was capable of this, but I knew the whole time. I was like, I know he's gonna have this role. He's gonna kill it, and he's put in so much work. And people have kind of, you know, overlooked him a little bit. And now. They better not overlook him now because he's killing it. So I'm not surprised. I love him. He's one of my favorite teammates, if not my favorite. Not trying to pick, but Jaws my guy. All so. right. Outstanding. So, you know, looking forward now, looking ahead, how do you take a game like this that you maybe you had a lopsided victory and not kind of get comfortable? I mean, <clears throat> it's what well, it's been the issue last year and even that Woburn game we lost last week is just sustaining – sustaining our effort and tonight the coach just uh harped on it in the locker room just saying this was like more as close as it's been to a complete game that we've had and we just brought it we never took the foot off the gas and we just gotta continue to bring that like practice on sunday don't like be content with what we got let's just keep it going and you know middlesex league better watch out wow <laughs> you heard it there from the super sophomore and we'll be back right after this and we're back. I'm here with the Sports A to Z player of the game, Jelani Joshua, who had an unbelievable career night. And Jelani, talk to me about what it was like out there tonight. Um, it was unbelievable. The energy was out the roof. And um, we fed off the energy and we got the job done. You sure did. Now tell us a little bit about... You, you're, 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 you've worked real hard to get where you are. Tell us a little bit about what your mindset is going into every day that you're trying to get better. Every day, um, you know, I just remind myself of where I started and how hard I worked to get where I am and where I want to see myself in the future. So I keep that to push me and I just keep working hard. And I know my team wants to go places, so we got to just keep working. Absolutely, and they, they kind of rode your energy and effort and, 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 and the balls you were putting in. You haven't been someone that scored a lot of points, but you, you certainly see it 17 tonight. You know, is that something that you're, you're kind of, you, you've been hoping to do is put the ball in the basket a little more? Um, yes, that's exactly what I've been hoping to do. You know, um, I try to do my thing on defense, but tonight I was able to also put it both on defense and offense, and I was proud of myself. You should be because everybody here was proud of you. Now, 
when, t- tell us a little bit about the coaching staff and, and, and how they've given you confidence and, and, and kind of shaped, you know, how, how you've improved here over the years. Um, well, they, they work as hard, you know, even though, like, it was a tough start in the beginning. They never made me feel like they gave up on me. They were always working as hard, and now I'm here. You sure are. Let me tell you something. You are an inspiration to me. I am always trying to look for the positive and people that don't quit, especially when they face a little bit of adversity. And there's players out there that are watching this right now that are maybe in the same spot that you were a little, little a few years ago, and, and, and you're living proof sitting here right here yeah. to show them that if you work hard and try your best, good things can happen. So I'm proud of you. Everybody here is proud of you, and good luck going forward. Thank you. All right. We'll be back right after this. Bing. Bing, bang, boom. And ready to finalize things, our final guest here tonight on the post-game show is Coach John Bola. Coach, congratulations on the win tonight. Thank you. Yeah, you know, the great team effort, um, you know, game, last game before uh, Christmas. So, um, you know, very, very proud of the guys that came out and, you know, played hard for 32 minutes. 46 straight regular season home wins for the Spy Ponders. Talking to head of basketball operations, Tim Shuler, before the game, he said in his mind, or maybe in yours, I'm not sure, the players, we, uh, some way, uh, that the... Beginning of the second half in the Watertown game really began your season for whatever reason is how he felt. We saw the second half of that Watertown game and the first half of this game. I know as a coach you always want to get better, but can the team really play any better than it did for that period of a, of a full game, of half of one game and into the first half of this game? Yeah, you know, I think you know, defensively we came out and you know, had a, like a 22-point quarter, and like a, I think they scored 10. Um, you know, we, we talk about the team, we want to keep teams under... 10 points in a quarter, or, or 10, and score 20 points in a quarter. Because I think it, it deflates teams. They don't score double figures, and if you get put 20 points on us, so we did kind of did both. Um, you know, we played outstanding. You know, being a coach, we still, you know, nitpick a little sure. and be like, you know, we, we think we can play better. But, um, you know, the effort, our effort level was, you know, is where we need to be, you know, 32 minutes every game. And, and then clean up a little thing, a little, you know, some stuff in offensive. You know, we didn't score. We didn't. A few times in the school, well in transition, we had two on ones, and we, mm-hmm. you know, we should be getting layups or easy hoops, and uh, we weren't. But um, you know, we did a great job, you know, running our offense, being patient. You know, July did a great job, you know, on the glass. Um, James, everyone that came in, Brendan, Brendan had a great shooting game. Yep. Um, Sam Swift, I mean, everyone. Alan did an, another great job. Um, you know, that number zero was averaging tw- uh, 20 points a game. He didn't score in the first half, and Alan and Phillip did a great job on they him. Really did. Uh, he really didn't score until the end of the game. No. So, um, no. you know, I think, uh, you know, very proud of the guys. Yeah, I think you guys took him out early, and he was really, I don't know if he was frustrated or just they weren't getting him into the offense, but the Allington defense did a great job. I mean, I think pretty much for the season you're going to roll probably as far as, as James and Brendan are going to take you offensively. But to get the extra offense tonight from, Jil- uh, from Jelani, I think was phenomenal. He had 17 points. I don't know if Scott talked to him, but talk about this young man who has gone from being a – um, uh, a, stu- a student manager for the JV team two years ago into your starting lineup and having such an impact on the game tonight. Yeah, I mean, Jelani just, you know, he, he worked so hard. You know, he, as a sophomore, you know, he basically was the, the manager on JV. And, uh, you know, a manager on JV, they, they're allowed to practice, but they don't play. And right. then, you know, by the end of the year, you know, we, we had him playing a little okay. on JV. And then that summer he had a huge jump, you know, to, to make varsity last year. Um, didn't play a ton and then just made another huge jump this year and uh, he just, just he's just a hard worker you know he works hard every day in practice you know he worked hard during the off season to improve his game and um, you know it's, it's you know it's why you know, it's, you know as a coach we love to see it you know we gave him a chance to be to just practice and he took it and ran with it and now and, um, you know it's all paying off right now good so kind of a weird schedule as I mentioned at the end of the telecast for Arlington you have a tournament uh, two games at Malden Catholic the Malden Catholic tournament and then back into the grind of the uh, of the league season with three consecutive road games don't have a home game until January 12th unfortunately as a coach you know that's got to be kind of a, a little disappointing but uh, you have to you know, prepare a little bit differently when you have, uh, you know, a string of road games like that. Yeah, yeah, no, we, you know, we, like we play extremely well at home, and uh, yeah, exactly. we had a great crowd tonight, um, a great support from the community and the school. Um, so yeah, I mean, the road's a little tougher. It's tough to win road games, you know, at any level, high school, college, uh, travel. You know, it's, it's tough, but um, you know, we have just a mindset where we have to go out and. Um, you know, play 32 minutes and, you know, run our, run our sets and, um, you know, be relentless on defense. Very good. Coach Bull, thank you for joining us, and Merry Christmas to you and your family thank and your first baby Christmas. I, I think that'll be a fun, uh, fun time for thank you this you coming up much. weekend. So that's going to wrap things up here from the Tarzlowski Gymnasium. want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and actually a Happy New Year because our next home telecast won't be until January 12th. Also want to root the Fighting Irish luck in their championship 
semifinal game in a couple of weeks. No, actually, no, one week away on the 29th, so go Irish there. With my partner, Scott Swick, Alex Van Thong, our producer. I'm Don Phelan. The final score here tonight, Arlington 71 and Lexington 45.